everybody. Make sure to go check out the Nine Point Issue 2 Kickstarter. We've got like 10 days left, so you really got to get in there and become a backer if you want to read a cool comic about cat knights. Uh, yeah, there's a link in the description down below, and I guess go check it out. We'd really appreciate your support. That's it. That, that's the ad. Um, onto the video. Okay, so when you're making your comic, if you do plan to do a full color comic, you want to keep it simple. I've said this like a million times over several videos now already, but it's really important. You want a coloring style that you can replicate easily um, and one you can do quickly because comic pages, they take so long to make and coloring is such like a large process. You want to make it as simple as possible. Though honestly, I guess if you really want to do a say, coloring style that takes, like, a lot of work and a lot of hours, like, say, something that's super, like, painterly. If that's your dream, go for it. But just be aware that it's going to take a long time, and if you're okay with that, then you're all good. But if you want to finish your comics quickly, I'd recommend picking a very simple color style. So I guess to, like, break it down and explain things out a bit, it's a good idea to pick a style of how you want to color things. Um, and the way I kind of think about these styles is like, I kind of break them down into little different groups, though there's lots of like overlap in them. Okay, so the different styles of coloring that I look at for my own comics. Okay, so style number one would be, is just flats. So there's no like light or shadow, it's just flat colors. Maybe there's inks, maybe there's not, whatever. It could be lineless, um, but I've, I've tried this style out by just using um, uh, line work and then a flat color. It takes out a lot of the rendering and putting in the shadows and the light and making things look 3D and stuff. Like, it takes all that process out. Um, so, in a way, you could save a little bit of time, maybe, depending on how involved your colors are. And doing a kind of flat color really allows you to focus on the values of your colors, differentiate things, because you won't have those shadows or highlights to really, like, show the form of something. You have to rely on your colors and your inks um, to imply the shape. There is a trade-up. Things might feel a little bit more flat, honestly, but you can also do a lot of cool stuff by just using different colors and different values, um, and you can let your lines do a lot of the talking, so that's really cool. So that's one way you can go. Style number two, I think a lot of people break these up, but I kind of see them as kind of like the same tier of coloring style. Like they're very similar, you're just kind of using different brushes. And that would be cell shading or soft shading. So cell shading is when you use like very hard edges, like a hard edged brush to um, create shadows and highlights and stuff on your work, like on top of the flat colors. And then soft shading is using like an airbrush or like a very soft brush to put in your shadows and your highlights. So I feel like they function very similarly. It's usually like one to two values darker for shadows and maybe a highlight. And don't get me wrong, like soft shading and cell shading, you can, you can get pretty detailed and have a lot of layers and a lot of, um, like, you can make it really complicated and you can add a lot of detail to make it very intricate. You probably don't want to do that for comics because that would take a really long time. But <laughs> I think in essence they're just very similar. Um, especially if you keep it simple and you only use, like, a couple different values for your shadows and your highlights. It's just using a very different brush to do both. So there you go. So, um, cell shade slash slash um, soft shade, I think, is a very good option for comics. Um, it's what a lot of people do. If you want to just add in a, a couple shadows here and there, that's cool. You got it. You can apply lots of form very easily um, and pretty simply. You know, you just put down your flats and then you put down some shadows and maybe a highlight here and there, and you're good. You're Gucci. So yeah, I think a lot of people will choose this option. I think it's fine. I use it. It's good. It's what I, I use to color Sovereign, one of my comics, is like cell shading. And it's good. It gets the job done. Ooh woo. And finally, style number three, and I think this one covers like a whole bunch of different styles of coloring. But in essence, I think the umbrella term for it would be um, like a painterly style. So maybe like a coloring style that really um, uses a lot more 
focus on texture, um, you know, focuses on showing like brush strokes or blending. Um, it's a little more experimental. It might not might be lined, it might not be. You know, you can probably imagine what I'm talking about. And I find Painterly definitely takes a lot more time. There's a lot more building up of layers to get that kind of painted look um, where cell shading and like flat colors, like it's just a color and then a shadow on top where Painterly, like you might be building up tons of colors to like get all the, you know, all the colors you want on the skin tone or the background or whatever. And don't get me wrong, Painterly stuff is like gorgeous. But it's definitely a lot more time consuming, unless you have somehow magically worked out a way to make it go really quickly, or if it's like a way that you really love to work in, I say go for it. I wouldn't recommend it for your first comic, because that's like, if you're new to say painterly stuff and you're new to comics, that's a lot of stuff to learn all at once, um, and it'll definitely take you a lot longer than if you did say flat colors or cell shading, so there you go. And honestly, all of those style choices that I just broke down, like, there's definitely crossover and you can definitely take elements from all of them and mash them together and get some really good results. But whatever you choose for your comic, make sure you can replicate it quickly or do what you want to learn as well. Um, you know, I'm working on Nine Point using kind of using a lineless style that's a lot more rendered than my previous work, you know, and I wanted to learn how to do that. So Nine Point was a good option for me to do that. If you want to learn how to do anything really quickly, make a comic that includes it. There you go, because you'll have to draw the thing or use the style over and over again really quickly to get all your pages done. So if you really want to learn a certain way of coloring, make a comic that uses that coloring. But if you want to make your life easier, definitely choose one that is easy for you that you can do quickly. I guess some tips for like when you are coloring your comic, more tips. Like I already did a video about like tips for coloring your comic, but I guess just some things to like consider when you're working with one of your coloring styles is whatever you choose, it's really important to remember that flatting your color, so just putting down like the flat color underneath any rendering you do on top. It's very time consuming. It, it's like, I always find it's like the longest part of coloring my comics is just filling everything in. Um, it's kind of one of the evils of doing colored comics, unless you find it really relaxing, which is cool. I find it frustrating because I want to like zoom through my pages as fast as possible, and I think a lot of people feel that way as well. But you gotta do it. You gotta have colors down in order to render on top of them. I found working on Nine Point where I'm doing more of a lineless style, where I, the shapes are a bit more organic and it's not just kind of coloring in the lines, I've been finding a bit more fun and rewarding. So, you know, there's, there's probably ways you can turn flat coloring into something more engaging for your brain. You just gotta try out a few things. Who knows? Or you can just outline it and fill it with a fill bucket and that's totally cool. So for me, when I'm like working on my colors, I usually start by putting down my flats and then I do shadows after that. And it's really important when you are putting in shadows, whether you're doing like cell shading or soft shading or something more painterly, it's really important you understand where your light source is um, because you know, wherever your light is coming from, whether it's, like, the sun, you know, if it's a big, bright, like, midday scene and the sun's, like, right above everyone, or if it's the sunset and the sunlight's coming coming in from the side near the horizon, or if it's, like, your character's in a room and there's a lamp beside them, or if it's, like, a, will, a, a well-lit room or hallway with, like, tons of fluorescence, there's always, like, light coming from somewhere, and you need to figure out where, because that'll instruct you on how to, on, on where to put your shadows on your environment and your characters. Basically, wherever your light source is, like, the, I guess the easy way of breaking it down, a good place to start, is wherever your light source is, the shadows are on the opposite side of the object from where the light is. Do you remember all those, like, boring studies that you had to do in art class that your teachers told you to do, where you, um, you know, you shade in a cube where all the shadows are, and you do it for, like, a cylinder and a sphere and stuff? That's just really important to learn, because once you understand how that works, you know, you can simplify it down for cell shading, and you can understand kind of how light affects different forms, because, you know, the face has lots of spheres and roundness to it, and, you know, your arms and legs are basically cylinders, and things like tables and chairs and furniture and buildings, they're all cubes, right? Um, or made of curves or cylinders. 
So once you kind of understand how to do all the shading on that, then you're golden. You can apply it to anything. So yeah, make sure you know where your light source is. If you're doing something like... If you're doing a simple coloring style, like say like a simple cell shading or something, you don't have to worry too hard about exactly placing all the shadows and like going into super detail about all the shadows and where they go and stuff. Like it's okay to just put in a really simple small amount of shadow. That's fine. As long as it's implying the forms correctly, you're good. Also, an important thing to remember is that when you're coloring in shadows and stuff, uh, shadows tend to be more saturated. Uh, they're saturated dark colors instead of gray, so avoid using black. Um, try to use really, like, saturated dark versions of whatever color you're working on. Um, because if you put in black or gray or something, it's just gonna make things feel flat and weird. Whereas if you use, like, a nice, rich, like, saturated color, it's gonna feel a lot, like, deeper and it'll actually look like shadow. Then finally, like, when I have my, my shadows down, I usually put in some highlights. Sometimes it does come in the middle of the process of adding shadows. It just depends on where I'm at. So highlights mark places where your light source is shown, like, directly on the object. Um, so, for example, if you're looking at a face, like, the bridge of the nose usually has, like, a highlight on it. And so does, like, the brow or, like, the top of the lips because that's where, like... The light is shining off it and hitting it and reflecting it or whatever. I don't know how physics work. I just know there's highlights on those places because <laughs> they're not hidden in shadow. The light's just directly hitting them. You know, you know how it is. So figure out where your highlights are. Same idea, same process, same study of, you know, those spheres and cylinders and stuff. And it's very m important to understand that highlights tend to be desaturated and light in value. So like sometimes they can be pure white. Usually they're more kind of a gray, really light color. Try to use off-white if you can. Uh, you can get kind of a richer spectrum of value that way. Things to keep in mind, I guess. Um, and finally, I guess some little extra tips that I couldn't really figure out where to put in anywhere else. Make sure when you're coloring your comic, you're not relying only on filters. So I know it's really tempting to, if you have, if you're putting in shadows, like I do this too sometimes if I'm in a bind, and it can be like a good starting place. Anyways, it's really tempting to just like grab a dark color, put it on multiply on top of your flat colors, maybe pull down the opacity a little bit, and then boom, you got shadows. Like, don't get me wrong, that is a really quick way to get your comics done, but you're not going to learn much about color theory and you could end up making your colors look kind of flat that way as well. It's a great starting point, honestly though, if you're learning how to put in shadows and figure out the right colors and stuff. Um, what I tend to do is if I put down a shadow and I do the multiply thing, I'll usually go in with uh, an eye eyedropper, the eyedropper tool, and figure out what the heck that color is once I've got the, you know, the multiplied layer on top. And then I kind of play around in there and I can deepen the values and paint on top of things. So there you go. As long as you're kind of learning what colors are working and you don't only rely on your filters to make things look good, you're golden. But if you're not sure where to start, put a filter on and then work on it from there. Make sure that you have, and I guess tip number two, make sure that you have lots of contrast as always. As Bones and I are always telling people, make sure you're heightening your contrast. You don't want everything to be mid-tone where everything's kind of the same value. You want it to have real, like dark darks and light lights because it just makes your comic easier to read. <laughs> like if you can tell the character apart from the background, that's really good. That makes your comic easy to understand. So make sure that your contrast is nice and good value-wise and color-wise, of course. Um, and finally, tip number three is always use references. If you're ever not sure how light affects something, go grab a photograph or a mirror and find out what, how things actually look. Um, your work will be so much more lifelike and true to life and you'll learn a lot by just looking at how things really work and then translating it into your own style. Hopefully this helps break things down for if you're considering a coloring style. Make sure whatever you choose that it's easy to do and that you like it as well. That's a big really important thing is you have to have fun with this stuff because you're going to be working on this comic for a long time. And as always, I really recommend doing lots of experimenting before you start on your comic pages for the best results. You know, figure out if you hate it <laughs> before you commit to it and start posting your comic somewhere. And I wish you luck. Color comics are very time consuming, but they're really pretty. <laughs> they're also very expensive to print. 
but they're really pretty. So it's up to you. Thanks so much for watching. That's all I got. And make sure to check out our Kickstarter and make sure to subscribe if you want more videos about how to make comics and stuff. We're kind of doing a whole thing right now about making you comics. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.